explain to me what is meant by the Trinity. Muslims here would be totally confused about this. Trinity is Father, Son, and Spirit mentioned together, not always in that order. But for, so we're not, when we say Jesus is God, we never mean, right, in the Quran yes. you have this Holy Spirit as well. You're asking me now. Okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying. Yes, the Quran speaks about the Spirit of... Uh, you say that Jesus is by nature God. And, and I think you will agree that God by nature is... Hi guys, you're yeah, welcome back. Thank you so much for clicking up you guys and doing great. My name is Bukumi Bikekra. So, Christian scholar was pursued by the Trinity question. So, this is Shabi Ali explaining to a Christian who is Douglas Jacobi about the Trinity and that puzzled him. Let's watch. Explain to me what is meant by the Trinity because a lot of Muslims here would be totally confused about this. They want to know. Tell us what is meant by the Trinity. Trinity is um, it's a working concept that I find fairly persuasive but we see often Father, Son and Spirit mentioned together not always in that order but for example the end of Matthew 28 or the end of 2 Corinthians 13. Um, some Christians think that you shouldn't use the word Trinity because it's not in the Bible, but then the word Bible is not in the Bible. So we have to say something. Trinity, we believe strictly there's only one God. Yeah. But that God is Father, Son, and Spirit. So we're not, when we say Jesus is God, we never mean Jesus is Father, Son, and Spirit. Uh, it, it, that would be nonsensical. We're saying he's God in nature. Mm. And it's not, there are obviously not three rotating gods or manifestations of God. This is not modalism. This is not Sabellianism. I know you've studied all that theology and church history. Bless you uh, for doing that. But that's not what Christians mean. They hold on to a belief in one God, only one God, but a God who reveals himself as a, a human in Jesus' earthly ministry through Jesus Christ. So that's what we mean. And we definitely don't think it's Allah, Isa, and Maryam, okay. as in the Quran. Neither do I, but let me ask my but it next does, question. But it is in the Quran that way. It's not in the Quran that way, but uh, let me ask my question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it just concludes so, uh, you say that Jesus is by nature God. And, and I think you will agree that God by nature is spirit, uh, from, given the biblical language about this. True? God is spirit in Christianity, yeah, John yes. 4, 24. Okay, so, so God is spirit, and Jesus is by nature God, so he's a spirit. True? Uh, true, before the incarnation. The yes. incarnation is, is a spirit joining with flesh. So before he incarnated into flesh, he was a spirit. Uh, and I mean, I, I, I presume that's the right way to put it. Yes. Maybe there's a better way to put so it. So presumably, sure. uh, there were at least two Holy Spirits, Jesus and what we call the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's, the, the, the language you're using is alien to biblical theology. Wow. No, but I don't we think it would ever know. be put like, that way. What, yeah, we're because not you would, about... Because, uh, because God, God is spirit. Yes. Uh, angels are spirit. Yes. Okay, anything that's not physical is going to be spirit. So yes. I'm not sure that this is actually helping us. Yeah, but we're asking about, like, ultimately, um, there are obviously two holy spirits. We're not talking about lesser beings who are spirit beings, whether angels or devils. But we're asking now, at the highest echelon, you have a trinity of divine persons. And at least two of them we can now identify uh, are spirits. So you have two spirits in the highest echelon, and both of them have to be holy. So you have two holy spirits. Well, the Father is holy too, so if you want to make it three or more, three. you can go right ahead. So you have three but, holy spirits. But you're spirits. moving, the Trinity is an analogy, and when you press an analogy at some point, it's going to break down. Yes, but then the question is, how did Christians come up with this analogy? Because you said that Jesus is the Son of God, not biologically, but analogically. So how did Christians come up with this way of saying it, such that it is so flaky that if you press it a little bit, it breaks down. And not only at this one point, but if we keep going at this for hours, we will see that this is how it's going to go again and again. Like, no matter how you press it, it's going to break. So uh, how, how do you know that this is the correct way of speaking about God as a trinity? As opposed to, for example, the simple way of saying, there is only one God, he sent his Messiah, Jesus, he was a human being, a great one. Uh, a great messenger, a prophet of God, um, but still uh, a servant and messenger of God. Right. In well, the Quran, yes. you have this Holy Spirit as well. 
You're asking me now. Okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm just saying. <laughs> yes, the Quran speaks about the spirit of holiness, Ruh al Qudus. Right, but I don't say, and so you've got two spirits, Allah, or is the Quran the spirit, or is it a you know, analog Quran? But you see, we, we, don't, we don't have a problem with the spirit of holiness. I, there are some I, I ambiguity we're play, in the we're, Quran. We're, we're about playing with words here. God yeah. reveals himself through Jesus. Christians, monotheists, are trying to make sense of. Uh, who Jesus is and what he's saying about his father and that's where Trinity comes yeah. from an effort to understand Jesus' teaching and from our experience of the Trinity in our lives. Doug, the, the, the difference is that when we speak about there being only one God and we say the Quran is this book, this is a revealed message for us, there's no confusion in our minds as to who is God and who is not. Whom no, no, do we pray not. to and whom do we not pray to? So when we say there is one God, that's never compromised by our ever uttering three. I was only so, saying that there's a precedent for having more than one eternal, uncreated uh, entity in Islam itself. Uh, but, but I'm not asking about an uh, eternal and uncreated entity. I'm asking about the highest echelon, which only belongs to God. Uh, do you have three persons, and are the three each a spirit, each a holy spirit? And in that case, how does the Bible say there is only one spirit? One times one times one. <laughs> Not okay. one plus one plus one. What about uh, one times one times one times one times one times one ad infinitum? That would also be one, true? So you can have many Holy Spirits and still have one God. I don't know any Muslims, Jews, or Christians who think that there's more than one Holy Spirit. Uh, so I don't think it's so confusing. And that ends the question point of uh, portion of this. And now uh, we will move on. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Wow, very short and boom, boom, boom. Gave me a lot of information. I got a lot of information in just few minutes. I tried to understand the Muslim scholar point of view. It was like, if there is, you know, Holy Spirit and there's Jesus and it's true God, these two people came to being, then are you not trying to say that they are God? And you know, he said in Islam, they believe that Allah is the only God. They have the spirit of, is it holiness or, yes, spirit of holiness. But Allah is the only God that they depend on, the, you know. So it's, I've seen that, if you're not saying that Holy Spirit and Jesus, they are God, then that means you're serving, you know, different gods at once. Because you can say God is God. Jesus is God. Holy Spirit is God. And the Muslim scholar said, then who do you pray to? It's like Christians pray to different type of people. They pray to God, they pray to Holy Spirit, and they pray to Jesus. That is to say, they are not worshipping one God. That's what it means. That's what it's, you know, statement means. But in Islam, they only serve only one God, which is Allah. So it's not like trying to uh, let us know why is it so that Jesus and Holy Spirit comes from God. The Christian pastor tried to explain it that it was true God, Jesus came, and Holy Spirit came. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Of course, to my that subscribe button for more. Like, share. But that was a beautiful one. I really enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for watching, guys. So don't forget to smash that like button. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more. Like, share, comment. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.